What's going on, bottom line viewers? It's that time of year. It's the NFL free agency, a time as a football fan that is filled with hope. And here are who, in my opinion, are the top 10 defensive free agents that your team could potentially sign this offseason. Let's start off with number 10, cornerback EJ Gaines. Gaines was acquired by the Bills just this past season as a part of the Sammy Watkins deal in August, and he ended up with 59 combined tackles, three forced fumbles, an interception, and his best season so far as a pro. At only 25 years old, Gaines is entering his prime and has plenty of talent. He ranked 13th overall at the position by Pro Football Focus. So really, this is a guy that if your team is in need of a starting cornerback, but maybe they can't afford a Malcolm Butler or a Trumaine Johnson, then EJ Gaines could definitely be your guy. At number 9, I have Trey Boston. Trey Boston has become a top cover safety in the NFL. He ranked 9th overall in coverage according to Pro Football Focus. And Boston, he had a breakout season in LA as a Charger, and he regularly drew the team's tight end in coverage. This is a guy that's completely snuck under the radar. He's an extremely aggressive athletic player, and at only 25, he is in the sweet spot where he can really help a secondary improve and make an immediate impact, but he also has a little bit of time to improve his other parts of his game, like in run support, where he does have a little bit of a weakness. But overall, Trey Boston is a guy that I think is going to be a diamond in the rough for whatever team finds him. At number eight, I have Don Terry Poe. Don Terry Poe was a free agent just last offseason, and he decided to take a one-year prove-it deal. Poe proved he can be a little bit more than just a rotational starter for anyone who decides to pick him up. He played 880 snaps in 2017. That was the fourth most for an interior defender. Poe excels in eating up blocks and stopping the run, and he really drastically helped change and improve the Falcons' run defense and defense in general in 2017. Plus, he is athletic enough to throw a pass or even line up at fullback in goal line sets, so that just goes to show that this guy is in better shape than ever, he's ready to play, and I think he's actually going to be a hot commodity for any team that wants to stop the run in 2018. At number 7, I have Demario Davis, linebacker, and Demario Davis is the lone inside linebacker on this list, but he really is a good one, and he's a personal favorite of mine. Davis returned to the Jets in 2017 after a stint with the Browns to have his best overall season as a pro, proving he had matured as a player with 135 tackles, 5 sacks, and 3 pass deflections. And in the modern NFL, you can never really have enough experienced athletic linebackers. DeMario is really the best when it comes to stopping the run, but he is athletic enough and fast enough to stay on the field on third downs to play the pass and he would be valuable and more than likely really a cheap asset to any team across this league. Demario Davis is a guy that I think a lot of teams should be looking out for, and I think you could get him at a real cheap dollar. At number six, I have LaMarcus Joyner. One of the most underrated parts of the Rams turnaround in 2017, converted cornerback turned free safety LaMarcus Joyner, who tied Harrison Smith for the best pro football focus coverage grade for a safety Joyner's ability to read, react, and cover space quickly was a huge part of Wade Phillips' defense. Joyner is the type of player who makes his presence felt. He is a playmaker, no doubt about it. He has amazing ball skills, and in Joyner's 12 games in 2017, he picked off three passes, he returned one for a touchdown, and he also forced a fumble. Defenses in need of a playmaker will definitely find that Joyner, no matter if it's man, if it's zone, if he's blitzing, will make that game-changing play every single time. At number five, I have Sheldon Richardson. Sheldon Richardson has always had the ability to be a game wrecker on the inside. I've watched this guy closely throughout the years, and really, his first season, he immediately dominated the NFL. He won the Defensive Rookie of the Year his first season, and although his 2017 stats don't exactly show it, the Seahawks got what they asked for, and they got a bit of that Richardson back. When he's motivated, Richardson's a beast, and he can help out any defense in any scheme. If he's at 4-3 defense, put him in at D-tackle. 3-4 defense, he has the athleticism to play end. Teams in need of a pass rush could definitely use Richardson. This guy rolls out of bed, and he's a great pass rusher. 
Pro Football Focus ranked him as the 13th most productive defensive lineman in the league in pass rush productivity. Plus, he has the rare motor for a big man to play on all three downs, and you don't have to worry about taking him off on third, second, or first down. This guy can play regular snaps, and you don't have to worry about his stamina whatsoever. I think Sheldon Richardson is going to be a guy that's going to be a hot commodity this offseason because of his versatility, because of his ability to get after the quarterback, and because of his rare size and athleticism combination. At number four, I have Malcolm Butler. Malcolm Butler was the Super Bowl hero turned Super Bowl what if. Butler is certainly on his way out of New England, and a lot of teams would love to start him in a Super Bowl if they had the chance. I know Belichick, you don't want to, but Butler... Yeah, his play did dip in 2017, but in 2015 and 2016, this is a corner and this is a player that was regarded as a top 10 number one cornerback. And he was lining up across from some of the best receivers in the game. And one of the rare abilities that Malcolm Butler possesses is his ability to play man-to-man coverage and his ability to lock down some of the quicker, faster wide receivers in the NFL. Butler, I I really wouldn't be surprised if he went to some of the Patriots' biggest rivals and tried to sign a contract there because that's the type of player and the type of athlete that Malcolm Butler is. He's confident, he's aggressive, and he'll definitely bring a championship pedigree to any team that signs him. At number three, I have Ezekiel Ansah. One of the top pass rushers in free agency, Ezekiel Ansah perhaps has gone a bit under the radar given that he has played in Detroit for five seasons. But in two of the past three seasons, Ansaw has had 12 plus sacks. And in 2017, he had 12 sacks in just 14 games. And that's while struggling with some injury issues. Now, if that doesn't scream talent, then I don't know really what does. That's impressive overall. Ansaw is a really impressive specimen. He's big, he's fast, he's amazing at the point of attack. But also, he brings injuries with him. He's sort of the band-aid a little bit. And if you're going to give top money to a pass rusher, you would like him to be healthy. Don't get me wrong, Ziggy certainly looked healthy at the end of this past season, but at 29 years old and with lingering issues, keeping him from practicing consistently, it's going to be interesting to see how teams treat him. Still, guys who consistently can get after the quarterback are very hard to find, and Ansel will be in for a big payday regardless of where he goes. At number two, I have Tremaine Johnson. These last couple of seasons, Tremaine Johnson has been the silent shutdown corner in the NFL. This past season, you could certainly argue he's at least a top 10 corner, if not a top 5 corner. He has the ideal size to go up against any receiver, and he uses his big frame and length really well in run support as well. The veteran DB also showed that he has no fatigue. This guy played more than a 1,000 snaps for Los Angeles last year, which was more than any player outside of an offensive lineman on his team. Johnson gives you size, athleticism, and a player who can master the toughest defensive schemes. Johnson is the type of corner who can take your defense to the next level. At number one, I have Demarcus Lawrence. Demarcus Lawrence came out of absolutely friggin' nowhere. He produced the best season from a Cowboys edge defender since the DeMarcus Ware days. Yeah, that long ago. 58 tackles, 14 and a half sacks, four force fumbles. Lawrence was a force and his play was consistent. And it really certainly didn't feel like an aberration whatsoever. Lawrence finished second in pressure rate and third overall in grade for pro football focus edge defenders. Most signs point towards Lawrence going back to the Cowboys, but it's going to take a huge amount of cash to get him to stay. At 25 years old, Lawrence has the league by the balls, and it appears that he's going to be a pro bowler for many years to come. Whoever lands Lawrence is landing one of the best pass rushers in the NFL. All right, guys, that's my top 10 defensive free agents in the NFL for 2018. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if I missed any defender that you believe should be in this list and any defender from this list that you think that your team should sign. It's Mitch of the Bottom Line View. I hope you guys enjoyed once again. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and peace out.